Star Citizens. Druin here, and another episode of Star Citizen is amazing. We're actually in 3.2 PTU, Public Test Universe, and we're taking out the brand new Origin 600. This is the most glorious spaceship ever designed. Stats listed at 91.5 meters. Not sure if it turned out the full 91.5, but it is big. Res out here on pad 00, where the Starfarers, Caterpillars, and Reclaimers launch. I've not yet put it side by side to a Starfarer. I have put it side by side to a Connie, Constellation Aquila, and it's maybe 15% bigger or so. A constellation 61 meters, I think. And it seems like it's maybe about 10 to 15 meters longer. It's a big ship. These gigantic landing gear. Stand clear. Uh, I think these are thrusters. So we have quite a few fixed maneuvering thrusters. Yeah, keep clear. I think there's 12 fixed maneuvering thrusters. And this is the bottom uh, retractable turret bay. This is the cargo and rover elevator. This is the front passenger elevator, which comes all the way down. Actually, let's speed up here a little bit. Oh, there's another one out there. Yeah, we need to clear the pad here pretty soon. But she's a very, very pretty ship from this angle. That lower area, that all glass nose, not glass, but transparent metal, diamond, aluminum, whatever it might be. There's enough room down here to drive a rover in. Because this is the Explorer version. There are two versions. There is a Touring and Exploring. And... Look how pretty this is. Very, very clean design. And there is room for probably at least two people. Maybe three. Yeah, I'd say you could probably get three people on here. Top deck, lower deck. We're going to the top deck. Passing one glass door on the lower level, upper level, another glass door, origin. We're going to go take off and get off the pad here first, and then we'll do our tour. So you enter it from the right side, oh, slightly back here, right side, enter pilot seat. Look how beautiful that is. Look at that animation. It is just super sexy. Look at that view. And I haven't actually used a flight ready. I normally hit 8 on the advanced keyboard. Origin ah, look. Core system operational. look at those displays. They are definitely the cleanest, nicest looking displays that we have. cockpit. That is just stunning. A little jerky on the takeoff here. We're still in PTU, so things are a little bit of a, a little bit of a mess. It's actually probably been the best performing PTU that I have seen. If 
depending on the angle, that front landing gear can look a little uh, a little out of proportion. But as you saw when it was on the pad, it's not really that bad. A lot of people being pretty silly. But look, they fold away beautifully, seamlessly with the hull. When I first saw it, I wasn't really thrilled with the exterior, the overall shape, but it's really grown on me quite a bit. It is very sleek, quite large. Look at that. Look at those lines. Yeah, all the initial views that we saw of it in concept did not have the guns on it. Uh, some people are bitching that uh, that one on the top looks makes it look like a unicorn. But um, I don't know if they're going to make these retractable in the future. It doesn't look like it's designed to be the way that that uh, hull shape is. I don't see them redesigning the hull there. And frankly, they don't really bother me that much. I mean, these over here in the back are kind of uh, kind of hidden. They're, these are size five weapons. So, and they're pretty big. Look at that view through the glass in the back. You can see the lounge, the table. She actually handles pretty well, look at that. And not quite as responsive as a Connie, maybe. But way more responsive than any of the big ships. It's not drifty. Those maneuvering thrusters really keep it on and she doesn't drift. super fast not super maneuverable but she's a huge ship she's three times the mass of a Connie so it's just kind of silly so top speed in SEM standard combat maneuver is 145 meters per second you can see that there on the HUD we're gonna head back into uh, the armistice zone do a little EVAing and wandering around the ship. Now we, she does boost pretty well. Look, look at that acceleration. I mean, for a ship this size, everybody's complaining that she's not that sprinty. Considering her size and mass, that was a pretty good little boost. We'll take her for a, a better spin here a little bit later. Check out that view, though, and this is one of the most amazing cockpit views. And look at that! Look at that! All the way around, no struts. Uh, I do take some pride in uh, being a part of getting the struts removed. There were going to be struts, you know, kind of like a car, a B pillars on its side. They took them out. I uh, had a big forum post. Uh, I am actually an luxury architectural consultant for Windows and uh, posted a bunch of pictures of how things look with less struts on some luxury homes. And uh, because I'm also the bar citizen, international bar citizen organizer, coordinator. Uh, I know a lot of people in the community, so I went out and hyped that, and uh, we had like 150 plus uh, people upvoting it, lots of comments. Um, the whole community was really pretty um, pretty active in uh, talking about getting rid of, rid of those struts, because this is just absolutely glorious. Glorious. I can walk all the way up here. Look how clean these designs are, these leather seats. Uh, it looks like a BMW seat right there. Look at that leather. Look at the stitching. Zoom all the way in. And the quality of 
the detail and design is just extraordinary. Wow, look at that. Glass. Lots and lots of glass. Oh. Everything's all flowing. Everything's curved. Now oh, that cockpit, uh, not cockpit, this, this is a bridge. It's not a cockpit. Cockpit's for a little fighter. This is a bridge, and this is a yacht. So this is a yacht bridge, and it is beautiful. That stone inlay there, and that kind of O origin pattern, and the origin logo there, a little step up. Some people have been saying that this is too much space back here, but I think that there's a, a lot of access panels here for components and engineering. Uh, there. Is that more leather? Look at that. Leather accents. Love it. Absolutely love it. Looks like there's some uh, components visible under the deck through some glass. Just lots and lots of little beautiful design detailing. Everything under glass. Not like Drake, where everything's all just hanging out there, barely stuck together with duct tape and bailing wire. Look at these glass doors. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Now the bridge door, let's back up a little bit so that can close, is actually opaque. So you load privacy security. Maybe it's a little bit more secure when you lock it if you're being boarded by those nasty pirates. Up here are the three escape pods for the bridge crew or anybody in the front section of the ship. Now some people are complaining that uh, you don't have escape pods everywhere in the ship. Like, oh, well if I'm in the captain's cabin I have to go up the elevator to get to the escape pod. It's like, uh, You know, you can't have everything everywhere. It just really annoys me how many people are complaining about little things when this is just such a glorious, glorious ship. I was watching Montoya's video the other day and he was over here checking out the leather in the escape pods. Who does leather escape pods? Origin. Thank you very much. Yes, I have been an Origin fan since right after I first backed in uh, September of 2015 over here into the exploration module. So this is the middle of the ship and this center section here, this upper and lower level, swaps out in the touring version. We're not sure what's going to be in that and uh, frankly I thought that the, uh, the rear lounge was actually the touring version but no we have a whole nother aft third of the ship. This thing is huge. So this upper section um, we have a command and control holo display here. So this is going to show everything in nearby space, your stations, your moons, planets, um, uh, and spaceships. And you have a glass floor. Walk right out on here. Look at that. Glass floors. I love it. This is just so gorgeous. Flowing lines. I look at the, the railing. Everything is just beautifully designed. They did a great job with this ship. Here's another central module, engineering panels, so that's probably where you control some of the engineering from. Another sliding glass door. Very Star Trek-y. That's why I tell people ever since I started seeing this ship is that it's very Starfleet. Imagine this very much like the futuristic Enterprise. Not the old Captain Kirk or maybe the uh, John Luke Picard Enterprise, but even further into the future where it's even cleaner and sleeker. Now, this design aesthetic is for the public areas, the workspaces, the scanning station, the bridges you saw, um, engineering spaces, and then we'll see the crew area here in a little bit uh, is a totally different, warmer, more cozy design aesthetic. Now these are the two sc scanning stations. So the 600 has two scanning stations and 
not sure what all is going to be involved in that, but we know that it's going to have long range scanning ability. So we walk through into the after third of the ship, and there is the beautiful grand staircase that leads up to the uh, upper bar. I, I love this design here. So there's stone underneath this, the floating stairs, and then these kind of flowing, twisting feel. So the stair treads turn and twist up and curve. Just beautifully designed. I, just, I, I love how this looks. And then you get those little LED lights along the stairs. And I actually do a lot of work in 20, 30 million dollar homes and it's kind of lighting and it's very, uh, very subtle, very subdued, very elegant. Oh shit, look at that. More stone up in the ceiling. Oh, some people are complaining. It's like, oh, it's so heavy because there's all this stone in it. It's like, ah, come on, get off it. It's a beautiful design detail. So, I'm actually going to go back up to the front area before we go into the after section. Open. And we're going to call our elevator. I love this elevator. The glowing floor. Kind of like from the Revel in York hangar, for any of y'all that have been in there. Ah, God, just love it. I just, every bit of this is just beautiful. We're going to go to the lower deck. So soft and smooth. Pneumatic elevator. Here's another stone wall with the silver inlay for the Origin logo. Beautifully, beautifully done. Look at those reflections. The lighting in here. They did an amazing job with the lighting in the ship. And so this, in the front, is the captain's quarters. Look at this. This is where I am going to live until I get my 890 jump. And then I'll have two homes. There's some more stone. Look at that. Is that... Looks like a black marble, maybe? Beautifully, beautifully done. More marble accents all the way around. Here's the captain's desk. Beautifully sleek and flowing. Control panel, marble on the wall. Mic off. Mic on. This cute little lamp. Abby sensation. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, a couple of liquor bottles as bookends. That's hilarious. This, the square man's. What is that? What does that say? The square man's. I don't know if it's my, my eyes here. I, I'm having trouble reading that. Try a different angle. Is that the Square Man's Merlot? Blue Lodge Vineyard. Sector 3, 357, UEE. <laughs> I love that. The Square Man's Merlot. And a square bottle. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> All the little funny touches that uh, the CIG guys put into the ship. I love this plant wall. This is actually a lot of the houses that we're doing lately uh, have these living walls. Um, same in public buildings too, but uh, even several of the homes that, uh, that we've done have these living walls in them. And it's a great way to have an uh, indoor garden. It's a little uh, misty humidity there. Luckily, I can't feel that. <laughs> Hardwood flooring. It looks like maple. Is that maple? I don't know. The grain's a little, uh, a little, a little 
straight on the grain. It's a beautiful, beautiful wood though. Maybe birch. I actually do a lot of uh, custom doors in, a, in our projects as well. And uh, just lots of the, the new homes that, uh, that we're doing. We're actually in Miami Beach. And um, the design aesthetic has really gone to more stone and wood interiors, which I'm, I'm glad that the CIG designers pulled from modern design because it's definitely a lot warmer, cozier, a lot more natural feeling. I mean, the stone and the wood really gives it that um, natural um, sen sense of, uh, of tie-in with nature, uh, even if we're far from it in our hectic urban worlds now. Very much like the ship, this kind of brings that uh, planetary feel of the stone and the wood to our future space life. Look at this view. This is just freaking amazing. Oh, looks like we've got some auto turrets shooting at a pirate over there. We can just sit right here and just watch the traffic of Port Olisar. <laughs> I may do this a lot. <laughs> I, lo I love watching the, uh, the ships flying around. Not a very busy day. I think it's not a very busy server right now in the PTU. It has been a fairly busy PTU. So we have a... Uh, I'm rambling, as I tend to. So we have this little cozy table and actually not very comfortable looking sofa there. Like modern design isn't always comfortable, but when you get into the really expensive stuff, it looks good and it's comfortable. Uh, the angle of that back, I think, feels a little stiff. All right. And the the seats a little, a little, a little short. I, I'm I'm nitpicking. I mean, it's it's beautiful. I, I love it. Um, love the cigars sitting down here. I have actually partaken of a few cigars in my time. Not much anymore. They leave me with such a horrible feeling mouth the next morning. And this bed, gigantic king size size bed for you and a friend or two or three. The only downside of this to me right now, anyway, easily fixed, is that you get down, you lay in bed, look at that view, beautiful out there, yep, I'm sitting up looking out, and ow, oh, I'm looking at the ceiling. Oh, well look at that. Well you know, I did not realize while laying in bed, I can just look straight out at the view as I relax after a hard day doing whatever rich space yacht owners do. Okay, well that makes me feel a lot better, actually. <laughs> that was the only thing that I was kind of bitching about in, uh, in this design, is putting this bed out here in front because I just, I prefer to sit in a comfy sofa with a cocktail, perhaps my square man's Merlot, and just enjoy the view. Hopefully they'll add a sitting animation. So over here, a lot of people have missed, is this is the captain's bathroom. Oh, you have to manually open it. It doesn't automatically open. It's small and cozy, beautiful. I mean, it, the way that they laid this ship out, I mean, is really just probably the best layout of any large ship that I've seen CIG do yet. Of course, we've only seen the Caterpillar, the Starfarer. Starfarer is a god-awful maze. And uh, the Reclaimer now, which is fairly well laid out for what it is. So his, here's our row books, clothes rack. Beautiful design of those, those hangers. Although, I need a bigger closet. I need a bigger closet. Mirror, very elegant, modern sink and faucet. I actually have been in the decorative plumbing industry for 20-something years before I got into Windows. Looks like a uh, Dornbracht out of Germany, actually. What do we have here? 
Vetoretti moisturizer and daily facial wash. Yes. Dare grind. <laughs> all, all these little touches. I just, I love it. I love it. Though I hate to think of how these are going to go fly around and uh, potentially break our mirror, which is not currently reflecting. It's reflecting actually does a good job of reflecting everything except for me, but I'm sure at, at some point it will be reflecting you in your mirror because I've seen myself reflected, I think, in some metallic surfaces. Is there something here? Or is this, this is just a wall, maybe. No, it does not open. Another marble detail with some silver inlays. Love it. And here's the cozy little toilet and shower compartment, actually. Beautiful little toilet toilet compartment with, again, the stone and silver inlays. And these kind of flowing designs. Just love it. Oh, look. There's the toilet flutter. And here, look at this. Now, I've been in custom showers of $20 million homes. And they're designed very much like this. Bigger, yes. Usually they're minimum six to eight feet wide. But uh, we are limited on space. What I noticed in here is that these are body sprays on sides, front, and for your legs. One, two, three, four. 8, 12 sets of body sprays. You're going to be completely... I don't like the ones on your face. Um, I think they overlooked that. <laughs> and then we have this beautiful overhead ceiling rain shower, which is going to be spectacular, with a light in it. These go for about $10,000 right now. And is a very popular design in your $20 million homes. Look at that towel bar. It's probably heated to keep your towels dry and soft and fluffy. The value of a towel warmer is not properly appreciated. Also something that I sell, used to sell, before I became a window guy. Now this is the rover and cargo area. And I have seen an Ursa fit in here. And the Cyclone, I've seen people in the PTU actually stuff a Merlin and a Razor in here. It was a tight fit. There's your glass ceiling and the holo display. Ah, oh, that is just, a, it's a beautiful, beautiful detail. So these arms here are columns, um, I don't know what you call them. So then these are the um, things that your cargo floor drops down on. Beautifully, beautifully, smoothly designed glass. Looks like the inside of a computer room at Apple or something. So these are the cargo modules. I wondered how these worked before, actually, and I've seen some people actually loading up cargo. So these actually retract into the wall so the cargo doesn't project into the walkway. And uh, it's a very, very compact, clean design. We actually have about 40 SCU, standard cargo units, that it holds. So that is um, six less than the Cutlass still respectable. Not a lot, but respectable. Over here again we have another coat rack for when you're heading out on the town. On both sides. Or your environment suits. So this is the lower rear crew area. So we have, so remember up above we had a stair um, that went up, and then now we have a stair going down. Similar in design. Elevator also goes between two levels. 
And here's the crew quarters. More stone and silver. Again, an opaque door for privacy. Mic off. Mic on. Pardon me, I had to uh, mute myself while I coughed. So this is the crew area. Very much like a luxury yacht crew uh, dorm area. I have not been on a luxury yacht, but I've seen a lot of interiors in magazines and whatnot because it's all part of enjoying the luxury lifestyle. So each of the crew areas has not just a bed, but also a nice little sitting cubby where you can enjoy a book, a glass of Square Man's Merlot, all these curving details with more wood and silver. Having some graphical issues there. It's not holding up. There we go. Yeah, see, that looks better. Very nice detailing there on the hardwood. More leather. The seat does actually look very comfortable. I'll probably come hang out over here because their sofas are more comfortable than mine. All these little spotlights down here, little LED lights, marble in the ceiling. So some people are complaining that it's foggy, there's particles. This is, yeah, okay, so it's not realistic. It doesn't have to make sense. It gives it kind of a cozy atmosphere. No, it, it helps to accentuate the lighting. This is all about lighting, and they have done a spectacular job of lighting this ship. It is absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous. What do we have over here? What is this? I don't know. These look like storage lockers. Storage cabinets. I don't. Th I don't know. You know, this does look like a good spot for potentially sun, some type of furniture addition. Is there something there? Does, okay, so nothing comes out of the floor at this point. But one of the things that we have hypothesized is that the hangar flare items, like liquor cabinets, aquariums, all that sort of stuff, that um, posters, that you can decorate your hangar with, we'll actually be able to decorate our ships with. And people are saying that this is very over spacious. I, I don't know, I think it feels just about right. So you feel like you have your own personal space. If this is my crew area, I have essentially this whole section is my room. Okay, so I don't have privacy, but you know, that's normal for crew or military or that sort of thing. Captain has privacy, that's what matters. But I'm thinking that we may be able to place our choice of furniture here. Just a hypothesis. But we're still a long way from live, and there's a lot coming. So it looks like we have some closets here. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so we've got escape pods back here for the four crew members. So you can get down here. Yeah, it's all the way down through the crew area, all the way in the back. You have to come down from the bar if you have to abandon ship because you're sucking back uh, some of those Square Man's Merlots or Radagast whiskeys up at the bar and all of a sudden you're attacked by pirates and you didn't realize that that was coming, which just stretches my imagination and you'll have to rush all the way down here from the bar, through the crew area, back to your escape pods. Silly complaint. You're only probably going to have to rush in here if you're caught unaware sleeping. Alright, so... Those people bitching annoy me as well. So here we have a little uh, seating area for when you're getting dressed, or while somebody's getting dressed and somebody else is just sitting back chatting. And here is the lovely crew washroom. So we have another hangar area. There's your hangar icon. Let you know that that is for hangers. 
<laughs> I think it is the only ship where I have seen hangar hooks. I don't think uh, they have those in the Reclaimer or the Starfarer or the Caterpillar. Another bench here. We have a his and his. That one appears to be locked. Someone must be using it. <laughs> First aid. More hangers. So this is really just a changing room. Another changing room. Lots of hangers. I hope I'm not making you making you dizzy as I spin around. Okay, so we have two washroom areas. So we have another sink. A little more compact. Still very clean, nice design. Nice toilet. Nice shower. Another nice overhead shower here. Definitely better than some of the uh, lower class ones. Those also look like body sprays. I bet you they are. Okay, so we have a little excessive dust in here. I know people are complaining about that. It's a they can tweak that. They can easily tweak that. Stop complaining. It's PTU. The ship was only just released. Like, it's still in PTU. It's not even live yet. Come on, people. Chill the hell out. Ah, luckily it is not locked, so we do have two compartments. Mirror images of each other. Lots of room. Pretty spacious for a crew bathroom and clean, unlike the Reclaimer, which is a pigsty. And a lot of people complain about that. Hopefully, those people that like to run in, rec in Reclaimers can actually clean up their ships. Okay, so we're gonna take the elevator up. To the top deck. a big, big, big ship. There's so much room in here, and I was just thrilled at how much room we have. Alright. Don't tell me I'm locked in. Oh, there it is. Just a little delay. Again, it is PTU. Everything's a little buggy. A little laggy. This is the armory. Oh, look, there's a manual override button. So this is the, what they call the armory. Suits and armor. There. Suits and armor, suits and armor, several closets for suits and armor, and weapons. So it is an exploration ship in case you are going into a hostile environment. Do have a lot of storage room. What is that? Pull, pull for access. So there's something up there. Another medical panel, fire extinguishers, another engineering panel. There are lots of little panels around these ships, so that's something a lot of people don't think about, that over time, there's going to be a lot of component maintenance, which uh, people are a little bit torn on, depending on how much that's going to be a pain in the ass maintaining your ships. Oh man, this is beautiful. Look at this whole glass ceiling. Look at the stars. Stunning. And a bar. Some storage areas over here. I don't know if... Probably can't open them yet. There's a lot of little access panels. It's going to be very cool when you just go around and open all these little access panels. All over the ship. Little storage cubby holes, component access. Oh, I forgot to look up when I was downstairs, so that's the crew area. No, that's the downstairs lounge area. Forgot. Yeah, I knew better than that. <laughs> well, holy crap, look at that. Ah, oh, man, look at that. There's Crusader. This freaking glass ceiling. <laughs> that is just stunning. <laughs> Love it. So we have some bar snacks here. Nuts and jelly beans and who knows what, maybe they're all 
various jelly beans. I don't know. I'm not a jelly bean person. So we have a fully stocked bar here for enjoying your long trips in the verse. Here's some Radagast. Most premium. And some more Square Man's Merlot. Single malt stock. Scotch. Smoltz. Smoltz beer. I don't know if I like the name Smoltz. That's my biggest complaint now in the ship, is the beer is all Smoltz. I, I need a refund. Melt it. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of silly people out there. Oh, look. Another marble texture. More like a Carrera marble in the top bar. Lower part, that kind of green marble. So we have some bar stools over here. Some people think that they're a little far from the bar. Yeah, I do agree. You may be sitting a little far from the bar on the, on the stools. Minor complaint. Hopefully we can live with it. Hopefully. Look, even the, the railing has upholstered leather inserts. As you sip your cocktails, standing at the railing, looking out at the verse. There's the rings of Crusader. Look at that. <laughs> I'm sitting at my bar. I should have flipped the ship. I could easily go flip the ship so that we're looking down at Olasar from here. I just see myself spending a lot of time wandering around enjoying my ship as we travel the verse. Because it's going to take time to get from one planet to another in Star Citizen. And there's going to be a hundred star systems. It's going to take from 8, 10, 20 minutes traveling in quantum from one planet to another in, in space. Did I just kill myself? I just killed myself. PTU, thank god I had a mighty pen. I, I think I stubbed my shin. It was a critical shin shin stubbing there. <laughs> thank god I had a mighty pen. Sharp edges. Alright, someone talk to the designers. No, just joking. It's PTU. Little silly things like that happen. Now there's the rear remote turret. Some people are complaining that that uh, little arm it's on is a bit spindly. Alright, it does seem a little silly in proportion. But we're not going to dwell on that because the rest of the ship is absolutely glorious. So we have a table here. This is also supposedly a holo table. We saw a glowing tiger above this, so we may be able to actually watch holo displays here. A large seat for half a dozen to a, probably a dozen, maybe, shit, maybe 20 of your friends can hang out back here in this area. We're going to throw some hellacious parties on the yacht. And then here's another seating area. Sit down here, there's the bar, there's Stanton. We can all just go sightseeing, hanging out, checking out the verse. So this is the lower crew area. Not crew area, sorry, lounge area. Oh, I didn't realize before. That looks like curved wooden seats with leather fronts. A little short on the um, on the seat length. Real life wouldn't be totally comfortable, but that is okay. It is a virtual universe. It does not have to be perfectly proportioned. I can overlook that. It still looks cool. So you and a friend can watch something on the telly there. Enjoy a cocktail. I like that little table between them.
It's a nice design. More wood, again, wood, leather, all these lovely details. I like this floating stair that's very modern. Very clean. There's the back of that seat, just kind of floating out there, cantilevered, as they say. No support around it, just cantilevered, except for that bar across the bottom. I love, just love the way they design the interiors. So here is the mess area. We're not going to call it a mess area. Because it is not messy. Enjoy a meal, a bottle of wine. Of course, we have to have a wine rack for our crew. Pre, pre <laughs> Pre-workout, natural, <laughs> that's what we don't have, god damn it, we don't have a gym aboard, oh, I'm going to have to talk with Chris, we need a gym, <laughs> because I can't work out on my yacht, so this is the nicely stocked crew, uh, eating facility. Look at that built-in refrigerator. That looks very much like a uh, Sub-Zero $10,000 refrigerator that uh, most of the luxury homes have these days. And then up here we have... I was literally worried I was going to walk into glass and break my nose. <laughs> So that was actually open. So here's the pool table. So this is actually going to have real physics. We're really going to be able to play pool on our ships while we're traveling the Earth. Because I've seen in um, Star Marine people playing pistol pool. So you can actually take your pistol out and shoot the pool, um, pool, <laughs> that shoot the ball, and uh, they'll actually bounce around on the table. Usually they fly off because shooting a pool bill billiard ball imparts quite a bit of energy. So we have another little fern down here. A little bit of greenery. A good bit of greenery behind the pool table. And the lighting again. Beautiful. So these are actually the engineering compartments. Some people complain. It's like, why are they off of the, the lounge area? Why do we have engineering and cargo? So these are more cargo modules. So those actually retract into the wall and your cargo crates are flush with the wall. Very nice design. Too high for SCU cargo containers. But this just happens to be the wider part of the ship in the middle section. Remember, below this is the crew quarters. So that's why this is here. It makes sense from a ship design standpoint. Not always from an interior layout standpoint. It still works out just fine. So these are component modules. I think that we can open some of these doors. Not that one. Somewhere in here. Open, close. So anyhow, there are component modules behind these doors. Some of them open somewhere. I know I've opened something. Or maybe they're just not wor working right now. It's PTU, and it's early. So these are going to house things like your power plant, your coolers, your heat sinks, your shield generators, your computer cores, all those things, and they will have subcomponents, which you will have to maintain and swap out. So there's one on either side of the billiard room. More cargo here, probably for storing components. Not sure how all that's going to actually work out in the verse, down the road. Last patch we could open these. My off. Mic on. Sorry, I muted myself to cough again. 
But um, yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of modules down here, so we'll actually have to have subcomponents stored to replace them as they break. So if you've got somebody who always wanted to be Scotty on the Enterprise, this is going to be the job for them, keeping everything working. Even under just regular day-to-day -day use, things are going to break down and have to be maintained. So, yeah, that's a tour of the Origin 600. I think I saw everything now. So everything in the back, every nook and cranny. A few tours have missed things because there are so many rooms. It is a huge ship. There's so much room in here. I just, I can't get over how much room there is to just wander around the beauty of this ship. A little delay here. They were a little, a little more responsive in the last patch. We still have a week to go before we go live. So, there's still more work to do. Oh, I left her on. We are going to head over to Yella. And see one of the sites that tourists should see. Alright, where the hell is it? Okay, they've changed how quantum works now. Alright, where the hell? Where's my marker? God damn it. Okay. We've selected yellow. I don't even know where the hell I am now. God damn it. <laughs> Alright, there's Olasar. Turn around. Turn around. There is my marker. There it is. There it is. And there's our new quantum spooling. Calibrating. Well, it calculates our route. Quantum drive activated. Quantum drive activated. Look at that, that is just beautiful. Just absolutely stunning. Look at that. Jesus Christ, I can't get over that, that is just beautiful. There's me, in the pilot's chair. Captain's cabin. The Rings of the Moons of Yella. So this is a small asteroid belt around a small moon around one planet. So think about that. We just jumped, I don't know, 60, 80,000 uh, kilometers over to a moon. There's a gas giant back behind us. There's th three other, or two other moons. Damar and Selen around this planet. And then there's Arcorp is another planet in this star system. Just think about the scale here. There's the sun, planet, moon, three more moons, three more planets around this sun in this star system. Uh, Arcorp, Microtech, no, two more planets, Arcorp and Microtech, and oh, Hurston. How could I forget as I ramble and ramble? Nope, I don't need that. That. So, what I kind of wanted to show is, like, when you, you're flying this ship, and you have these incredible views of what they're building. The planets, the spatial features, the spacescape, the nebula, the dust, the lighting. All of these 
moons rotate and orbit. So the moons are orbiting the planets, the planets are orbiting the sun, and they're all rotating. And all this is really happening in real time. It's really pretty extraordinary. So actually, let's see if we can jump down to, no, what am I doing? Everything's all kind of new, so I'm trying to remember and ramble about here as well. 950, 950, 700, so 700 is the essentially the center of yellow, so all the other ones are on the other side. 900, is there anything on this side of the freaking moon? It's in daylight. 900 and 700. Nine hundred, come on, seven hundred. All right, let's head for Benson. Calibrating, and we're gonna jump. Call a jump. We're gonna quantum. Ah, look at that. Love how they're doing these quantum splines to the. surface outposts. Fifty-seven kilometers. Oh, can't actually jump there. Landing gear deployed. What? Oh, I accidentally hit my landing gear. So we're gonna take her down. So we're accelerating up. Yeah, it takes a little while to get this ship up to uh, full cruise speed. Because she's a big, heavy ship. Five hundred meters per second, so that's a half a kilometer a second. We're at 22 kilometers altitude. We want to be careful how fast we approach the uh, the surface because we want to be able to slow down and not crash. Actually, let's start leveling out at 12,000, 12,000 meters, 10,000 meters. I love these mountains. They did a great job with the surface of these moons, and every patch, they tweak them, and they change them. So, we still have a long way to go, and with a little bit of work, they can make a lot of changes to the surface surfaces of these moons and planets as they improve their tech, which is what really impresses me. Look at that. Coming in on approach. Just freaking gorgeous. The rings. Absolutely stunning. <sighs> Look at that. I mean, it's, I mean, is there anything more beautiful in the verse than coming in from orbit over the surface of a moon or planet? And look at that view! It is just stunning! Alright, now we're still kind of dropping here. Okay, we're at full full power, but we're still losing altitude unless I strafe up. So that's probably a bug. So our uh, ship should maintain our altitude normally.
But again, it's PTU. It's early. A lot of times I'll go into third person to watch flying. But I gotta say, the view from this ship is just so stunning. Look at this. Talk about an exploration ship. If you're exploring over a moon or a planet, and imagine all the biomes. Okay, so our altimeter isn't working quite right because it says that we're below the surface. <laughs> and I'm still having to add, <coughs> excuse me for that, a little bit of upward strafe to maintain altitude because it's trying to fall a little bit. Needs a little tweaking. But look at that. Look at the mountain range. Imagine forests and rivers and trees. Forests and trees. That's yeah, the same thing. <laughs> Oceans, islands, mountains, cities. Imagine flying over Arp Arc Corp. A completely covered planet. It's an entire city. Or one of the alien planets, like one of the uh, the the Xeon homeworlds or Banu homeworlds. It's absolutely stunning. Just, God, I just I love this ship. Look at this. This is beautiful. This is freaking beautiful. We're going to fly over to that mountain range and land. Actually, we'll just, we're going to land over here. Landing gear deployed. I am level. They're going to give us back our kind of a landing HUD indicator, altitude, level, all those kinds of good things. So that, uh, well, that's why it's not maneuvering too well because. I was still in free look. right over here. Take us down. Look at the shadows. Look at that. Landing gear kind of bounces a little bit. They're still working on it. Turn, turn off the engines. Oh, no, I turned off all the power. I don't want to turn off all power. I just want to turn off the engines. So that she doesn't bounce around. Here I am, exploring the surface of a new moon. Okay, it's not new. We've all been here. But we're just imagining going to a new moon we have not yet been to planet. And I want to go see what it looks like back here. Oh, look at that. Stunning. Look at that. The rings. Come over here, grab a cocktail, or a schmaltz beer, or whatever the hell it is. Look at that view. 
All right, there's a big strut right there. I, I'm not going to bitch. I'm not going to bitch. <laughs> I still have a good view. There's still a good view. Minor struts. Not a big deal. I'm okay with that strut. I got rid of the ones in the cockpit. I'm okay. So the only thing we don't actually have is a ladder or stairwell to get from the upper area to the lower area. Front or back, we have to take an elevator. So what they have said, they being people complaining in the community, is that if the power is out and your elevators are not working, you cannot actually get downstairs. Check that out. What a beautifully, beautifully designed elevator. God, I love this ship. A little, uh, a little janky here. Still getting 30 FPS. Yeah, there's our lower remote turret. That is a very spindly thing, but hey, if it works, it works. Honestly, I do hope that they kind of beef that up a little bit. It does feel just a tad uh, dainty. So this is where we'll take our rover out. So here's a question. Is there enough room to be on the rover, come down, do you have to drop it, and then go out the other elevator if this takes up every bit of space on the rover elevator? Or can you have a rover and then stand over here beside it? We're going to have to try that out sometime. Not today. But yeah, so this is the Origin 600. The first new real origin ship that we have seen. In the verse to see what it's really going to look like. The new origin design language. I think it's stunning. Look at that ship. Look at that. Alright, we're going to have to uh, get a good shot here. Because, wow, that is just absolutely gorgeous. Screenshot. And, wow. So, thanks for sticking with me. I don't know if you stayed through the whole long as video. I don't even know how long this was, but uh, there's a lot to see. It's a big ship. It's beautiful. It's going to get better as they tweak it. I mean, people are complaining about performance. Screw that. And it just, just released. We, we have no uh, experience yet with how it's going to perform. I mean, they're going to balance and balance and balance for the next year or two. They're still balancing ships that came out a year ago, two years ago. And speed's probably going to stay about the same. Maneuvering probably similar and it'll it'll keep changing but uh oh oh the sun's coming up or is it going down up down oh i think it's going down look at those shadows that's just stunning <laughs> i love that this game is so beautiful it's not even really a game it's a virtual universe and it's coming along really, really nicely. Well, thanks for watching, and there's going to be quite a few more Star Citizen is amazing videos. So we'll see you around the verse.